All right, so here are our notes for Tuesday, February 1st, um, so that I can pull those small writing groups. These notes are called Life in the Colony, so make sure you have cut out the title. Make sure you've cut out the chart and pasted it on the construction paper. And what we're doing with these is we are comparing, pretty much comparing and contrasting what government, economy, and social life were like in the three colonial regions, the New England colonies, the middle colonies, and the southern colonies. We're going to start with social life because I feel like this one's the most interesting. What it really should say is education, not social life. So the education in the New England colonies, something interesting about it is they had the first public schools. So kids would leave home and go to school to be educated, much like we are today. In contrast, both the middle colonies and the southern colonies did not have public schools for quite some time. Children were taught at home. It says the exact same thing in both boxes. Don't worry about this. This is just me running out of space for the one above it. So children taught at home in the middle and southern colonies. All right, we are ready for economy. Now, economy is how money is made, how money is spent. It includes all the products, the raw materials, diamonds, coal, apples, oranges, as well as products, things you make from materials. Like I might use diamonds and gold to make earrings. That would be a product or a good that I am making from raw materials such as gold and diamonds. And many of these things we're about to talk about, we talked about yesterday. And in my second block, we talked about just a few minutes ago. So economy for the northern colonies. Remember, this included uh, New Hampshire, Massachusetts. So this is not surprising that they had thick forests. And those forests were used for lumber, which was then used for building ships and other materials homes and things like that. So remember on our maps we had the little log, we put a little symbol for a log for New Hampshire and Massachusetts. Fishing was the other one we put on our maps yesterday. If you remember from yesterday in the middle colonies, which I'm about to move on to, New York, Pennsylvania, they had wheat and cows. I remember that from yesterday off the top of my head. So let's see what it says. They farmed wheat. No surprise. They raised livestock. Cows. In cities, though, you wouldn't find the cows and the wheat because it's a city. Craftsmen worked there and they constructed various goods. I got cut off a little bit. So the wheat, livestock, no surprise, because we did that yesterday. All right, southern colonies. Let's see if I can remember. So this would be Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and Maryland. I remember Georgia and South Carolina were both indigo and cotton. And North Carolina and Virginia were tobacco. They grew cash crops, such as tobacco, cotton, and indigo. Let's talk about what a cash crop is. I think I've said this before, but you probably don't remember. So when something is a cash crop, it means it makes a lot of money. That's why it's called cash. And because it makes so much money, people want to grow that at the expense of everything else. Like if tobacco or cotton or indigo is going to make me a lot of money, I want to put that in my fields. Not corn, not beans. I want to put cotton in my field or indigo in my field because that's what's going to make me a lot of money. So these were crops that were pretty much everywhere you looked in a field, 
in South Carolina or Georgia, you would see cotton or indigo because it was such a money-making crop. Cash crops can be dangerous because people seek that profit out so much that they're, you know, may not be farming corn and wheat and things that people need to eat. And so you have populations that are going hungry because their government or, and the people that farm are just planting the cash crops. Not so much of an issue in the colonies because there was wheat and other things being grown elsewhere. So this allowed, it, allowed trade to happen between the colonies because the middle colony specialized in wheat and the southern colony specialized in these things so trade could happen. All right, let's look at the next one. All right, so now we have government. Government, of course, being the, the institution that makes the rules, sets up society, says how things are going to be. In the New England colonies, the local governments were towns. And in the towns, colonists could participate in town hall meetings. This would allow their voices to be heard, their opinions to be put out there so that the people in charge could listen to what the people wanted and make decisions accordingly. For the middle colonies, that would be New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey. Same thing. Local governments were towns and colonists participated in town hall meetings to let their voices be heard and their opinions be known. Okay, so if you need to pause it, go ahead and do so, because I'm going to move on to southern colonies. All right, our southern colonies, North Carolina and South Carolina, the Carolinas, Georgia, Virginia, Maryland. The local governments were counties. Now, the reason being, as we live out in the country, this is not difficult for us to imagine. People are more spread out when you're out in the country. The southern colonies were very much country. People were spread out. And so to get people together in a town, you needed to have a higher population. And many of the areas in the south just did not have that at this time period that we're studying. So while the middle and New England colonies had town governments, southern colonies didn't tend to have town governments. They tended to be counties, much larger area of land so that you know, you wouldn't have just a few people being governed at a local level. All right, and then county officials, the people in charge of the county, were put there chosen by the governor of the colony. So the governor would decide who would be in charge of Craven County, who would be in charge of Beaufort County, who would be in charge of Oslo County. Okay, so once you have these filled in, that's it for these notes. Name on it in the basket, and there are other tasks for you to work on if you haven't finished those. And you know where they are, and you know what to do.